and we are live welcome back everyone we are going to go ahead and shout out our sponsor timelessgamer.net uh, timelessgamer.net exists to inform and enlighten video game enthusiasts of all kinds one of our favorite articles from this week is the five most expensive playstation 2 games you can check out their website and more for articles like this and we'll go ahead and get started Yes, so we are back with another episode. This is episode 39, and we have a very special guest this week, so we'll just go ahead and jump right into it. We have our guest today, Jay Bartlett. So we're just going to go ahead and introduce him. How's it going? How are you guys? Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Um, I love the promo you guys did with the Foo Fighters music that, that made my morning on Wednesday. I was like, yes, so wicked. <laughs> great. He's, he's a yes. big Foo Fighters fan, so yeah. I had to. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Definitely. Definitely. We'll, <laughs> we'll definitely chat about that some too as well. But Yeah, we'll have to get a little bit of music uh, questions in there too. So yeah, I guess great. for... For everyone in the chat, we just want to make sure everything, you know, sounds and looks okay. And we'll just go ahead and shout out a couple people real quick. We have Millennial Collector Ohio, who said, hey, y'all, Millennial here. And then we have Articulated Chad, I'm here, let's do this. So we just want to make sure that, you know, everything is, is good to go. And we will go ahead and ask a few questions. Let's just, you know, start going on. So let's learn a little bit about you for the viewers. What is it right. exactly that you do in the gaming community, like the live streaming, the videos aspect? What would you say you do here? Well, that's a good <laughs> question. So um, I was in a film that came out in 2015 called Nintendo Quest. That would be my um, introduction to the world of the gaming community. Um. That was a gaming documentary. Currently, we are working on the sequel to that called Nintendo 64 Quest that starts shooting uh, this summertime. So that was my introduction into the gaming community. Um, I started a toy YouTube channel uh, during the pandemic in 2020 and merged my two loves together as of October last year. So we started doing gaming live streaming and toy live streaming together. Nice. And uh, it's been really great, really great ever since. Gaming live streaming is, is a lot of fun. It's uh, um, some of the most fun I've ever had in my career. So That's awesome. And I, I feel like we can all kind of relate, you know, with the whole game collecting, toy collecting, getting all, you know, into this. And It's one I of the like same, that's... really. I mean, I, I don't know many people that do one without the other, right? It's kind of, and then you throw sprinkle comic books in there, right? It's the same. Yes. Yeah. And cards, so, and you know, and then yeah. it spirals because you get VHS tapes, and then you have a problem, and no more space, you know. But we were, <laughs> and, we yeah, were and then then you do the big cleansing, and then you sell a bunch of stuff, and you feel yeah. great, and then you take the money, and then you buy more stuff, and it just goes in circles, right? I'm not there though. I just for, I can't for me, yes, stuff. for her, no. She almost had an intervention at the I convention it, on I call stage. It, <laughs> we call it trimming the fat, and it's yes. like you buy stuff that you're not sure that you really want. This is me in particular with a lot of toy stuff, a lot of new stuff. And then after a while, it's like, do I, do I really want those 20 Marvel Legends sitting there? I don't need, like, three different Spider-Mans, and you just kind of clear them out, right? So. Yep. Been there, done that probably, like, 50 times. <laughs> no less. We'll than never that. be there. We'll never be there. <laughs> 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 I, I like to uh, run in a weird phase. Like I had a phase where I was, I've had the Marvel Legends phase. Then I have a phase where I'm like, oh, I'm collecting like all Power Rangers stuff. No, now I'm collecting all uh, Godzilla stuff. Now I've got all Transformers. Now I'm just getting everything. And it's just like a cycle. <laughs> like you're always kind of changing what you have like a focus or, or passion on. Especially with toys for me. Yeah. So. yeah, kind of, yeah. And then new waves of new figures come out, and you're like, well, I got to have the Luke Skywalker for the 40th time, right? And then yeah. you buy another Luke Skywalker. Let me grab yeah. all those all those new uh, Black Series. When Black Series came out, I, I dived straight into that. I was like, oh, these are so cool. Now I have none of them. <laughs> I just told everyone. Got rid of it all? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. I think as collectors, we have this idea that when we buy something, we have to have it forever. Do you right. know what I mean? It's nice yeah. to have something. As long as you're not hemorrhaging money when you're selling it back, right? I mean, if you have it for a while and get some enjoyment out of it, I mean, that's good enough. Yeah, I mean, what are we really doing with toys anyway besides displaying them? 
you know, so it's, it, it's okay. I think it's normal. No, definitely a lot of people go through that stage, um, especially if they don't have space and they kind of like change their interests, you know, so I, I do see a lot of other people go through that. Yeah, it's pretty normal. Yeah, yeah. For me, uh, the new toy stuff is just, I've talked about this on my channel a lot. Um, the new toy stuff, especially in Canada, is really, really expensive now. Oh, wow. it's just it's too much like 40 45 dollars a figure it's just when you're getting into the price of like a video game a new release video game it's like okay i gotta cut back right i don't want to but i have to yeah it it can be a lot especially if you're like a person like me where when you get like one toy you want to collect the entire set and then they keep releasing more and more and then you want to get the games and you want to get this then you want to do retro then you want to get this and it's just it gets to be a lot. I can I can definitely see that for some people. They get you, yeah. Oh, they know what they're doing. <laughs> they certainly do. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I know with the uh, like the neck neck of turtles stuff when that first started coming out, I was like, oh yeah, all on board. Jeez. But now, I mean, there are so many neck of turtles figures. Like for you know a character that was in like a slight scene for something, you know, and like the original cartoon series like stuff like that or like 50 variants of uh you know one one character and it's it's like too much yeah <laughs> i didn't mind that with star wars in the 2000s uh with the, the 3.75 inch figures that was great you know you had the one alien that walked uh walked across the screen for two seconds i'll get him all day long i think that's cool because it was like six dollars yeah but yeah the neck of stuff is very very expensive and i'm noticing the quality is dropping quite a bit too i don't know if anyone else has noticed that but yeah it's just it's too much for what it is so mm -hmm. yeah i personally <laughs> dived completely out of toys like i definitely still have a passion and love for them but um i had gotten to the point where i'm like i'm going to collect one thing and it's going to be video game stuff because i don't even to be real I, I don't even have enough room for all the video game stuff i have so for me it just didn't make sense anymore and it, you know i'm fine with it honestly you know I, video games i use and play um you know it made more sense than something i'm just going to display for this point in time you know it always changes yeah, and then you get to the game stuff like standees and giant size posters <laughs> and that that gets out of I see uh actually you have the Mortal Kombat standee. I have that very standee in my basement too. Nice. And I got that at E B games in like ninety two, whenever the second one came out. Ninety three, sorry. That's I awesome. still have it. I still have it. It's it's a little rough. I think yours is in better shape, but I still have that one. That one is actually giant. It is. Like it's, it's huge. It's huge, yeah. It's it's like cool. at least seven foot tall, at least. Yeah, it's big. Yeah, it's it's like pretty. It's it's huge. That's our favorite stuff is like the the standees and promo stuff and the kiosks and and all the wild stuff the public wasn't supposed to have. That's that's our favorite. That stuff. that's the great stuff. I actually just secured um, a Panasonic 3DO uh, plexiglass sign. I don't know if it was attached oh, to an wow. interactive or not. Nice. But, uh, I talk often on my channel about uh, the mid '90s. And I think it was the greatest time in, in video game history as of uh, ever. I agree. Um, and the 3DO is still my favorite system. And you I guys can laugh at me. That's fine. But um, it was great because you didn't just have... There was Nintendo and Sega. And then you had all these other great competitors. You had Trip Hawkins coming in with the 3DO. You had the Atari Jaguar coming in. Neo Geo was still around in the background. So it wasn't just Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft. And just this boring war of like earning money do you know what i mean there you go there's your 3do that's the fz10 controller. yes yes yeah, mine are downstairs i um i have the 3do ode that we're going to be doing something on here like real soon and uh i'm a big i'm a big 3do guy too yeah i've got um the oh, only model the only model that i don't have now um like standard release model is the gold star i've had them yeah. multiple times but uh i need to find one again so it quit working yeah. and I wasn't doing repairs at the time, and uh, now I am. <laughs> so I wish I'd be Yeah, it's it. really, really interesting that Trip Hawkins decided to outsource the hardware. Right. Interesting business decisions. So that's why I have Panasonic Gold Star. I think there's a Sanyo one, I yes. think. There's a, there's a million different ones, right? Yeah. Yep. Interesting yes. business decision, for sure. 
he talks about it a lot on Facebook too. He's been like going through yeah. his like archive of stuff. I assume you have him on Facebook. Yeah, he's yeah. always posting. Yeah, like for I think when they stopped making hardware, he's losing thirty four or forty three million. It was one of those two. Either way, it's too yeah. much, right? Um, so you'd think it's like wow, it's a colossal failure, but. Him uh, and Nolan Bushnell, I think, are two of the most important people in history. Two of the most important people in gaming history. Um, just visionaries and willing to take risks. And they took risks. Some worked. Some didn't. They still had the guts to do that. I yes. think more developers need to do that nowadays. They, everyone plays it too safe. Yeah. I agree. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's. Uh, it's cool to see. He's like going through his archive of stuff and like putting stuff out there. You know that wasn't yeah. really supposed to be seen or was supposed to be tossed and thrown away which i love that's the stuff i love let me ask you are you a cdi fan at all oh yeah yeah 100 yeah, cool. yeah. my uh I love to hear it. my two favorite uh two favorite pieces of my collection are wanda gamelon and link faces of evil oh nice I need which this. i've had about 10 15 years now i'm still looking for zelda's adventure besides you could find it on ebay sure but yeah, i'd sure. love to find it in the wild i think it'd be more special those games I actually just did a playthrough of wanda gamelon nice and guys let me tell you you want to see pain the game is so <laughs> painful in like a good way you know it's like so bad it's good kind of thing I... Uh, yeah i love cdi i love all the uh the early full motion video stuff because okay. that was the future in the mid 90s right it was to get as close to realism you, as you could. So that's where all the developers thought it was going, which is kind of laughable now. Yes, it is. <laughs> I think uh, Zelda's Adventure is actually a playable game, in my opinion. I, I don't think it's the worst thing out there. I, I think out of the three, I, I would agree. It plays the best. Right? Yes. It's got the three-quarter top-down view. Um, By no means is it a fantastic gets... game, but yeah. Yeah, it plays better than the other two, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yep, I agree with you, <laughs> for sure. We do um, have a couple people in the chat that I did not want to forget about. Uh, we also have Lisa Bartlett in the chat. saying, my life. Yep. Hey, Lisa. <laughs> Figured. Cheers. Um, so we have articulated Chad saying, Mrs. Bartlett. And then she's saying, what up, Chad? Good to see you here. We also have Carl in saying, howdy, y'all. We have someone, it doesn't tell me who, it says Facebook user on my end. It yeah. says, hey, guys. And then we also have Ed Ford. Um, yo, what's up, guys? Yo, Ed. It was nice. I wish we we got some pics last night, man. I, I wish we had gotten some pictures with you. I, I regretted that. There was a few people I wanted to get pictures with. I was like, ah, oh, man. Yes. We, but we, there will always be, you know, other yeah. opportunities to meet up with, with yeah. everyone as well. So oh, I know sure. that we briefly talked about some of this whole live streaming and videos. I just wanted to also mention, where can people specifically find you? Uh, well, you can see my mm -hmm. documentary Nintendo Quest on Amazon Prime. Um, our series Action Figure Adventure, which is the toy series we do, is also on Amazon Prime. You can watch it there. Um, my personal gaming and toy channel is just my name, Jay Bartlett on YouTube. And that's why I encourage everyone to check out. Yes. And once again, we will go ahead and drop everything in the description so that everyone can follow along and, you know, check all of this out after the podcast. So we just wanted to do that. We also have a few more people popping in, uh, thinking it inside the box said, I got dragged away and wound up missing you. We will have more chances. And then we have, um, oh, it's, uh, it says, hey, Michaela from Game Jam South. We started watching, or we started streaming on Twitch thanks to you guys. So that is awesome oh, to wow. hear. Awesome. Um, glad that that, you know, we'll have to check that out too. So, it, you know, a lot of people here are interested in, you know, like the live streaming aspect. What would you say is like, I guess really different from like live streaming versus, you know, like the, the documentaries and the actual like filming and, and editing aspect. What do you, what would you kind of like say to people about like what's different and, and things like that? Live streaming video games um, is surprisingly exhausting. 
It, it really it really is. And I get made fun of a lot. Oh, you you had to play Zelda today. Oh boo hoo. It's like, yeah, well <laughs> it gets pretty exhausting exhausting, especially when you're doing the three or four hour mark um and beyond. Um I would say fighting through the moments, and there are many, as you guys know for sure, where you don't want to do it. Yeah. You don't want to go live. It's like, oh, I'm supposed to go live at eight. I just can't do it. I don't feel like it. Those are the moments when you have to rise up and say, I have to do it because I've made a commitment to my community and my audience. Yep. That I find um, at the beginning was really tough, um, especially when you're your, your like your own boss, right? It's easy mm -hmm. just to call in sick because you just have to answer to yourself. Really the discipline of doing it when you say you're going to do it. That's the difference between that and recorded television. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it definitely makes sense, especially when you're just starting to get into it. There are like some hurdles, you know, you just have to like get established in this whole like routine, um, you know, and you just have to like keep going yeah. through. And then once you're in it, usually you have a good time, especially when you start getting more and more people stopping by, like all of you guys watching, you know, we do appreciate all of the different comments, questions. We really do appreciate all of that. That way we can, like, continue on. We also have, you know, a whole section at the end of community questions. So, you know, happily leave any information or comments or anything like that. So we will definitely, you know, get to that as well. Yeah, absolutely. And so, then over here, um, what were you about to say? Oh, I was just going to say kind of... Moving on from that, um, I wanted to ask you, like, you know, what kind of got you into gaming? Like, what, where was your origins with gaming? Mm -hmm. uh, what, you know, what console did you start with? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, well, I'm up there. I'm old. So I was, I've been there since the beginning of video games, which is great. I feel like a war veteran who's kind of lived through it all. Uh, my aunt had a 2600. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was my first experience. I actually had a Pong machine, but 2600 was my first experience. And then my mom bought us the Atari. Uh, and then my aunt got the NES. I specifically remember uh, my uncle playing black box golf. And just okay. uh, the complete nice. difference between that and the 2600. Although I appreciate the 2600 in its place of history in video games. I never really was like, oh, the Atari is so great. I always remember just playing these games and being like, there can be so much more. Yes. And I really fell in love uh, when my buddy got his Nintendo, his NES. And at his birthday party, we all played Mario all night till the sun came up, as I'm sure everyone has. <laughs> that was really when I fell in love with video games. Yeah, I mean... I mean, I those are some great stories. Starting at the beginning... And then experiencing that big like jump and like how things like just changed at that moment and progressing forward. I mean, that's that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, like I remember playing Pac-Man on the twenty six hundred specifically, and everybody talking about how great Pac-Man was, and I thought it was I thought it was horrible. I'm like, this, what is? I don't you understand. Play the worst it, version. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't know, right? Right. Like that was kid, my I'm first like, game ever. That, that I also had a. 2600 the 2600 first. one yeah yeah i so i had a 2600 first as well and i had sure. pac-man was one of my three games i had for it so yeah that like was they my... couldn't get the pellets right nothing like the right. power pellets are kind of right and then the others are lines i'm like what <laughs> and so <laughs> later on in the art you know when i was old enough to go in the arcades obviously i discovered pac-man i'm like okay now i get it it's bright it's colorful it's beautiful uh, but the atari one is brutal brutal <laughs> Dare I say that Atari Pac-Man is, uh, or at least the 2600 version is, is worse than uh, E.T. <laughs> That's just my opinion. I will, listen, listen, listen. I will defend E.T. with my dying breath. I don't think E.T. is as bad as everyone says. I don't either. I, honestly don't. I don't either. I and the guy to, had like uh, no to time to with, um, make it. I got to hang out with Howard Scott Warshaw at uh, Portland Retro Gaming Expo a few years ago. I got to sit down and, and talk with him. And the amount of pressure that that one guy had to make a game in six weeks, having Spielberg on the phone, we got to get it out by Christmas. Yep, you got to do it all yourself. Like, that's a lot. Yeah, it's crazy. Like you're you're a, you're a kid, right? You're nineteen, twenty, a game developer for Atari, this brand new entertainment medium, and you're on the phone with Spielberg. Like, 
that's pretty scary. Yeah, a lot of biggest, <laughs> I just can see the biggest problem with ET. Nobody reads the instruction booklet. Nope. Okay. Nobody does. They just put it in and play and say it's horrible because they don't understand what the symbols mean or anything. If you just read the book a little bit, I'm not saying it's great, but you kind of understand what to do a bit more, right? Yeah. There you go, my ET defense. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, even you know, a lot of other games really especially relied on that that manual back in the day. Oh so. yeah. Especially when you got into the RPG stuff, right? Like you Yeah. You needed to know that there was a a creature in Zelda called a like like and all the wild names they had. <laughs> it was crucial. <laughs> yeah. The backstory of like the instruction book painted the backstory, I should say, but Going even before that to like the 2600 with stuff like Adventure, stuff like Raiders of the Lost Ark. If you didn't have that book, like you're done. Like you have no idea what's going on, right? Because the level of complexity outweighs what they could put on the screen. And the quest. So if you don't have the, the instructions games. to tell you how to get to the black market, to get to the key, to get to the ark, you have no idea what to do, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, they were crucial for sure. They were a big, you know, a big aspect of explaining like a backstory or a story at all for atari games obviously i mean if you wanted any sort and, of story the there was the all box in the, art. the manual the box art was so crucial too. those wonderful mm -hmm. uh paintings from activision back in the day like just beautiful beautiful artwork then you plug in the game and it's like ooh, <laughs> so look Wait, anything like that nope <laughs> no and you know what's so sad everyone we just don't get those things anymore. What artwork? The the manuals to the games. You have that cool little like slot in there, and there's just no manual. Yeah. You know, it's just it, these are sad days. <laughs> you flip the back of a PS4 or PS5 game, and there's barely even a screenshot of the game. Right. Yeah. There's all it's this all just stuff. filled up with licensing crap <laughs> and blah 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 this and that and they don't even describe the game anymore it's just like whatever game last of us who's last of us and okay well i guess i'm gonna just good luck it <laughs> yeah it's, it's wild and, and you know it's crazy like all these cases still have a spot for a manual they still have the little yeah. tabs to hold a manual <laughs> <laughs> even the switch that like never gets manuals there's like certain companies yeah. that put out manuals for this stuff like a very select few and i'm not even talking like the limited companies like there's a few like you know games that you can I find at retail but it's, it's so few that it just blows my mind i will say at least nintendo puts some kind of effort into the description of their game and they put some you know screenshots of the game yeah but i don't understand what's going on with playstation and xbox it's just like eh They'll buy it anyway. Who cares? Just throw it out there. It's like, <laughs> which I would is like the to truth, know what too. I mean, yeah. they, they well, will buy it, and they're probably <laughs> buying it digital. You know, people that are playing Call of Duty, I, I imagine the percentage is probably like ninety percent are buying it digital now. It's got to be. It's got to be something close to that. Clearly, you guys are physical collectors as well, right? Oh, yeah. Which, which I am absolutely as well. Um, so Zelda Day, because I wanted to stream it early, I bought it twice, right? I bought a physical, and then I bought a digital so I could stream it right when we woke oh, up on wow. Friday or whatever. The dedicated. Um, yeah, I, I will, say I will do that. I will do that. But, yeah, I mean, if I had a choice, yeah, I wish there was no digital stuff. Even, like, the indie yeah. games, I wish there was physical releases. If you, ha if you can afford a license to put it on Xbox or to put it on PlayStation... You should be able to get it out there physical. I just think, I don't know. It's just, I don't think we'll ever be in a digital only era. I don't, because it would have happened by now. I just don't think the hard drive spaces are too small. The games are too big. Like Zelda is like 2,000 gigs or whatever it is. It's not, but you know what I mean? So I don't think we're ever going to be there. But just to see that shrink so much is really quite sad. I mean, yeah, they, they've been. been They've right. been trying to do that, you know, digital only for a while. I mean, just like the PSP Go, right? Like, they wanted to oh, do fuck. that, you know? And, <laughs> like, it, the attempts yeah. have been there for a long time. I mean, they now they want to yeah. to have streaming consoles, right? They they really want, obviously, the, like, early on, the Ouya, you know, the stuff with the Ouya. Yeah. And, obviously, with uh, what's the console that they 
closed down the service for um I can't think of the name. Just can't remember, yeah. But yeah, I mean, none of those really worked properly. Um, the idea that we don't own anything anymore is yeah, really weird. frightening to it's me. Terrifying. Mm -hmm. um, you guys know when you turn on Netflix, right? You put on Netflix, and you're like, "Oh wow, whatever." Return of the Jedi, and you see Return of the Jedi, and then in the corner it says, "Last day to watch is August 19th," and you get that sinking feeling. You're like. Ugh. Like oh no, I need to hurry up and do this because it's yeah, gonna be wrong. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that. A lot of pressure. They constantly are taking money out every month. Mm -hmm. From a business standpoint, I get it. Let me just make that clear. But I don't like they're constantly taking money out each month, and then they're they're controlling what's on there. I, um, like the fact. Go even further. Talk about like the new Star Wars content. You can't buy the Mandalorian. You can't buy Andor. You can't buy any of that stuff. For me as a Star Wars fan, that's so bizarre. That I have these gaps in the collection and I have to keep subscribing yeah. 20 bucks a month to Disney on the off chance I might want to watch an Andor episode one day. Which yeah. I don't, but you guys get what I'm saying. <laughs> well, I don't like it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're not we're not big fans of it either. I I mean, I bought I bought Tears of the King twice too, but they're both physical. <laughs> Because I didn't want to open the collector's edition. I oh, you got the collector's? Well, you know that that one's going to be worth a gazillion dollars in like seven minutes. I saw, by the way, behind your head there, you have the Resident Evil 4 collector's edition. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's oh, wicked, it? man. Those, like, have you seen the price of the third one? The third one's like eight, nine hundred yeah. dollars. Like, yeah, it's crazy. And I, yeah. I missed out on those other ones. I've got the, well, I've got two. So I've got two and four. I don't have three, yeah. which sucks. Yeah, I don't have three or four. At least it's the, the well. lesser, go, yeah. the lesser of the games, right? Like it's, yeah. it wasn't a bad game, but it was, it was very, very short and very like. It was like that's it was that's funny everything. too because the, th the third one's my favorite, which we all have our favorites for whatever reason, right? <laughs> but the third one's my favorite, and I remember the pre-orders for that one specifically because I don't think it was as anticipated as two. Mm -hmm. The pre-orders of the collector's edition were like each retailer got like one or two, so it was like forget it. You know? Yeah, I missed my chance, and I was like, I'll deal with it later. I'll get it one day. Yeah. Did you um? Did you have anybody grab the controller? I was able to. I wasn't able to pre-order yeah. any of this stuff, but I got super lucky. A local um, That's a great. local store nice. got a bunch of those in. I I missed out on the amiibo, the case. Like I'm a big Zelda fan, so I wanted all that that crap. Um, but yeah, I, I grabbed the, um, I grabbed that and then I grabbed the collector's edition. So yeah, that collector's I'd say would be the most important thing. The amiibo you'll be able to find. That's not a huge deal. Yeah, you should and, be able to get some of the smaller items. I feel yeah. like. Yeah, I think so too. At some point anyway. <laughs> oh, we do right. have, um, some more people in the chat real quick. We have. Jeff over on Facebook saying, Evening, folks. We even have the Tech Buzz Gaming popping in. Yo, yo, yo. Um, we have Gigi McGee. I can tell you like Dave Grohl. We have Todd okay, Friedman. <laughs> <laughs> we have Todd Friedman popping in. Hi, everyone. Hello. We have Millennial Collector Ohio saying, Hey, all. Welcome to the podcast. Hope everyone is having an amazing Sunday. We have the Den of the Geek. Evening, everyone. Facebook, we have Thinking Inside the Box. Instruction manuals and guidebooks for the win. Gigi McGee, I love you guys. Catching daisies. You guys, you're live. Yay. Saying hi to us. Uh, Carl is even saying, I remember the Sega Master System game, Line of Fire. It has a 3D mode in it. It was only listed in the manual and not the box. So if you didn't read or have the manual, then you missed out on that. So that's interesting to know. I'll have to look that one up. We have Thinking Inside the Box saying, No more enthusiasm. It's all about money. I see a spot for a manual in the case is still too. The Den of the Geek. Jay was talking about Prima strategy guides, guides today. Um, thinking Inside the Box. Oh. Car still getting encyclopedia size books, though. Um... We have the Stadia, people talking about the Stadia, and where is that Zeppelin? So Yeah, that's, so that's, uh, I want to give a shout out, that's uh, 
my buddy Jeff from our community and and Chad and Lisa. For, thanks guys for uh, popping in. I appreciate that hanging out. They they were with me all day. I did a seven hour, seven hour plus uh, nice. Tears of the Kingdom stream. My third one this weekend. Wow! Um, and those guys were there the whole time, man. Like just, it's the game is insane. It's it's so much more than I ever thought it could be. Because I'm not a Breath of the Wild guy, even though I love Zelda. I didn't okay. like Breath of the Wild. I really didn't. Okay. This one is it's so much different huh. in a good way. So it's good. You guys are gonna yeah. love it. You're gonna love it. Yeah, that's we're excited. We um unfortunately <laughs> we didn't get a chance to do anything. I didn't even buy the game yet. Um <laughs> terrible, oh, I know. Yeah, yeah you um, guys have a busy weekend, it sounds, yeah. Yeah, eventually I'll get out there. Um I'm just a little bit behind and then have to sort through all of this footage that we uh now have to edit for both channels. So we'll get there. Um but it it is pretty cool to actually have someone here who has been streaming it, who can say just a little bit without like major spoilers, but you're saying that it's different than that in a better way. You know, it's, it's great. We do have that in one of our news um, topics. So we'll have to bring that up too. When, especially yeah, when, love when to he, talk about it whenever you're ready. Sure. Yes. Um, so just, I guess while he stepped away real quick, I know that we were briefly talking about toys. I'm curious to know what toy lines or like favorite toy lines you enjoy collecting for or you have collected for, or just things that you're interested in. So my toy love uh, uh, revolves around when I grew up, which was the 70s and 80s, um, naturally, right? You're going to gravitate towards that. Um, my favorite toy line of all time is G.I. Joe, Real American oh. Hero, which ran from 1982 to 1994. Mm-hmm um huge toy line 500 plus figures tons of vehicles play sets world building environments it's just such a great toy line when you talk to any gi joe fan one of the great things is who's your favorite gi joe character and besides snake eyes and cobra commander the obvious ones everybody and i mean everybody has different ones that's what's so great about it they all have their favorite figure because their mom bought it for them or their grandpa got took them shopping and got them this one and there's so many special memories that are tied to these characters. So G.I. Joe in particular is my favorite. Nice. nice. That's awesome. Yeah, we don't really hear... I guess we hear like more of like the, the 90s, but I mean, I guess some of like the late 80s, early 90s, we, we kind of hear sure. more of those, at least recently. So it's, it's great to hear something a little bit different. I love G.I. Joe. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan. I have a... Um dog tag that i got sent away when the first um live action movie came out they had like a little oh yeah 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 do you remember that so like uh walmart had like a an offer you could send in the dog tag i still got that but yeah gi joe is actually some of the toys that i still have left it's uh gi joe and transformers is what i hung on to oh that's so, really cool yeah it's a it's a great line um it's Hasbro, who makes the toys for it, unfortunately, aren't really trying to reel in mm -hmm. a new generation. No, so it's made for guys my age who grew up with it, and that's all. Excuse me, they're really marketing huh. it too. So when we when we're all gone, what happens to GI Joe? Right? It's so strange that they True, do that. Yeah. Where like you know Disney and Star Wars, they're roping in the next thirty generations, and that's fine. GI Joe seems to be stuck at my generation and they're not really reaching anyone else so yeah that's that's very odd to hear you would think that they would have like a different marketing scheme or if you do have like some of like the collector stuff for the older you know generation yeah. Then yeah. you'll bring in some of the newer stuff i don't know that's a little weird i feel like it's it's kind of like a weird thing where i feel like the the whole military aspect of it is just like dwindled down and it's not as appealing as like something like a robot or like a talking turtle. Um, you know, it's not, it's fantastical in a lot of ways, especially in like the cartoon, but didn't start <laughs> off that way. And, you know, it's, it's not as fantastical as like these other toy lines, you know, I think that's probably, well, it's got to have mean, something got, to do with it. Like the real American hero came out in 82 and it was pretty, 
green military was the theme of it, right? Yeah. And then around 85, 86, you started to get into like super villain characters with snakes on their yeah. heads and capes and stuff. So kind of went that way. And then some Joe fans really liked that and some didn't. So yeah. it was kind of a split there. Um, so it's got some of that. I don't know if it is the military and uh, a lot of companies are just trying to shy away from that. I, I don't know because, I mean, look at Call of Duty. You, you, anyone could say what they want, but that game is still targeted at kids. I mean, kids right. play Call of Duty. They're not supposed to, yeah. but they still do, right? And that game is just, you're just murdering people. That's all it is, right? <laughs> I mean, so. that's a good point. Yeah, it's. It, I don't know what it is. There, There is... There's something about G.I. Joe that I, I don't... They need to find a way to kind of, like, revision it for, you know, the coming audience. Yeah. Well, they, they, they don't have... You, you had the the three things that made the 80s great for toy lines. So you'd have the toy line, you'd have the comic book, and you'd have the cartoon. Right. All three <laughs> powered each other in a circle, right? Yeah. So G.I. Joe now, it's like they just keep re-releasing Snake Eyes, Cobra Commander, duke it's the yeah. same characters yeah. that we grew up with it's really quite boring um so if you're trying to get a new generation into enjoy this you have no cartoon you have no show you haven't what do you have you have the comic book sure but um, kids don't care about that they just don't yeah they're yeah. not going to want to watch like or, or read a book about some old war vets they're just they don't care right yeah so that's where it's yeah, going to with us yeah. sorry go ahead no, I was just saying that they definitely have to do more. They can't just rely on the one re-release of something and hope that more people are just going to magically jump into it. You know, you got to do, you got to do a little bit more. I, I do agree with that. Yep, I would say this newest generation, uh, from what I've observed, kids play with video games now like they're toys. Yes. So they don't want to go out to the store and buy a Snake Eyes figure. They want the thirty dollar ninja skin in fortnite that is their toy it's a digital toy right and that's what fortnite is collecting these are are your action figures so i think that's just maybe where the newer generation is moving that's um, sad that's so terrible it, it, it is sad it really is yeah that's and i i don't slam fortnite i think fortnite's an incredible game i just mean to, to not understand and actually in my previous job i was a game retail manager and i remember we started to carry a lot of the mcfarland Fortnite six inch toys yeah and you know the mom comes in at christmas time and she's like oh my kids are really really into uh Fortnite." i'm like okay cool you can't buy Fortnite; it's free like he's already got it so do you want the digital code so you can buy him skins well i kind of want something that you can open up for christmas okay cool here you go here's whatever guy I show her the toy, and you know what she says to me? She says, what's he supposed to do with this? Uh, I was just like, in my head, I'm like, what are you talking about? It's a toy. <laughs> You're his mom. I'm like, oh my god. So I'm wild. <laughs> my mind is blown. I was like, I can't help you with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, that's Yeah, that's crazy. I, it doesn't no, surprise me, though. You know, it doesn't surprise yeah. me the way things are. With all that stuff, yeah, it's always the Fortnite skins. Even with my daughter, like, she's really big into Roblox, so she wants mm. the Robux to get the skins for the stuff and that, and like the toys. Like it was there yeah. in the earlier years, and and she does, she still does play with them. You know, I don't let her on like her her tablet's her game console now, right? Like mm -hmm. she's sure. she's had yeah. a PS4. She she still has her Switch. Like the interest is not there. She'll pick up. For Minecraft every now and then, but her interest just isn't there. So that the skins for robot, like whatever they do in the Roblox, I I played it with her here and there, and I know there's like <laughs> a ton of stuff that you can buy. It's not just skins, but that's right. like her interest level with that stuff. And the the dolls and you know the toys are fading away, and she her interest in it, she doesn't play with them that long. It's back to wanting to do something else that she can, I mm. guess you know. I, I don't know what the kids not have imagination these days. What 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 is it? <laughs> we uh, like we play yeah. with leaves and rocks yeah. and sticks in the backyard, and we used to I like. I was a samurai with my yeah. sticks in the backyard. I can remember it as plain as day. I was out there practicing to be a samurai. <laughs> yeah, we just had fun with probably even like a cardboard box. I'm sure too. Oh, we used to build forts all the time. and 
Yeah. You know. Oh, you guys, may, you guys might be older than I am. Holy cow, rocks and cardboard boxes. Oh, dude, Back yes, in my day, the... we had to walk 10 miles to school. Me and um, Mark, who has you know been in a lot of Game Junction stuff, I can remember us fighting with sticks in the backyard many times. Not once, many sure, times sure. having sword fights. And uh, yeah, we had to you know work with what we had. But that's what, you know, that's what action figures and toys are too i yeah. mean you're holding the character you're becoming that character you act yeah. like the character yeah. it becomes like your little persona right so for yeah for that parent to say oh what's he supposed to do with this it's just like well i kind of got an idea as to why these kids are like that right if their parents don't even know yeah i don't know i don't i don't have kids myself so i don't know but um i've seen a lot again at the, the game store when i worked there it's a lot of little kids walking around with tablets or they're walking around causing chaos and mom's not paying attention because she's on her phone. Yep. Just yeah. everyone with these devices in their faces, man. It's I sound like an old guy screaming at the clouds. I'm sorry, but it's true. It's like we need I to mean, unplug and step back once in a while. Right. I, I feel like we, I feel like even, you know, people probably in their early twenties are kind of maybe, maybe mid 20s like people are starting to realize that i feel like it's it's a thing that's out there i that hope is, so i hope you're right yeah, i really hope i, hope I, I know you know people yeah. that are younger than me that are talking about this and that are you know limiting the screen time limiting you know all this stuff that it's just it's chaos all the time you know social media and and all this stuff is uh it's just changed everything changed everything mm -hmm. And kids today are, um, their worth is based on likes. Yeah. You know, is... they post a picture and they get 25 likes. They get that dopamine hit. They're like, oh my God, this is great. Then they post one, maybe a few hours later and they get two likes and then they're, woo, oh, why does no yeah. one like me? And I can't imagine. I thank God I didn't grow up in that time. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, I'll, I'll post, I'll post, oh, I'm going live in 10 minutes and no one does anything. And I'm just like, oh, what did I do? You know, he's scratching my head. But I'm glad that I discovered or that stuff was created in my adult years and not when I was going to high school or whatnot. Cause I can't imagine what that would be like with phones and photos and texting and oh, God. Yeah. Like I that. mean, me and uh, Gamer Aimer are like right in that, that time. Where we had the the pre internet, pre smartphone, yes. pre social media, but also you know where it started, you know with MySpace and all that stuff. So I had yeah. I didn't get a yeah. phone until my junior year, which you know now is like crazy, right? But yeah. I was right at that time where you know it was MySpace started. That was like a whole thing, and like I can easily remember the pre phone at all. And it, even when I got a phone, it wasn't a smartphone. So, like, you know, it was it was early on. I had, like, a little crappy, you know, like, junk flip phone. Not even one of the cool ones. Like the, yeah, uh, I started with the, the brick. Yeah, yeah. The Nokia, I'm, that's what I had, the 2210 or whatever prepaid. it was called. I think what gets me um, kind of steering it back a little bit towards gaming is this was my last experience with online gaming with strangers and i know this sounds funny but it's true it was uh halo 3 mm -hmm. whenever that was 2007 i think halo 3 came out and i remember just jumping into death matches multiplayer matches and just the things people would say to you just the the, the racial slurs the swearing the, the your mom every garbage <laughs> thing you could ever say yeah and then you 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 would see these people in the street you wouldn't really but you can imagine you know it's like they're they're frightened they're afraid they wouldn't say anything to you face to face it's just like when did this become a thing i guess it's because there's no consequences online right but i remember just being like god i miss the 64 days when the four of us would sit on the floor in front of the tv and you know you would enjoy each other's company or the arcades even going further back right you would go to the arcades they were seedy, they were dark, sure, but I mean, come on, like everyone, like I met so many people in the arcade because, you know, you couldn't be shooting your mouth off then or you'd have had to do something about it, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Just this online persona thing that people have, I think it's just like, it's crazy to me. Yeah. It's a whole different world now. Yeah. I agree.
Now we do have um, a couple people in the chat. I want to quickly get these before we steer too far. Um, we have Carl um, Peterson saying Transformers are my favorite, but I absolutely love G.I. Joe too. Lots cool. of happy memories from when I was a kid from my parents gifting me the figures for Christmas and birthdays. We have um, Catching Daisy saying, I'm not a toy fan, honestly. To me, games for kids these days make more sense. So that kind of also like throws in the fact that we're saying that like some people just don't understand what to do with toys and stuff today. Sure, yeah. I can see uh, that. Yeah. Cody Barnes saying, everything now is for older people's nostalgia. The toy owls are all stuff from our childhood. This generation will have nothing for the nostalgia in 20 to 30 years. Agreed. We have Deciphon is saying, Hey Jay, long time fan. Game Junction seems to be one of my favorite channels on YouTube. Um, we also have Retro Tiburon saying, What up all? We also have Gary popping by. Uh, what's up, buddy? Love you, Gamer Aimer. So thank you. Again, we'll have to definitely talk about the weekend. We appreciate everyone stopping by too. Yep. Um, Cody saying, My son turned nine and all he wanted for his birthday is Robux. So. <laughs> I that makes sense. Really... <laughs> it seems <to> popular. <laughs> um, the Den of the Geek, it's like kids are forgetting how to play like we did in sandboxes and in the backyards. We have people saying totally agree. Hello, chat. Um, when I was three, empty cardboard tube and I was a Jedi. 38 years later, <laughs> and an empty cardboard tube still makes me a Jedi. <laughs> Absolutely, it does. 100%. And that's why is that? Because that's your imagination, that, right? That Christmas <laughs> wrapping paper cardboard. Wow. You, always, the best. You, you have to hit someone with it. Like you, you can't. Oh, yeah. You can't just bend it and throw it in the recycle. You have to hit someone. Make exactly. that little. They made that you, little. Yeah. You go up to them and you you like yell in their ear with it. Yeah, and you go, oh, oh that was the yeah. worst. And your and ears you buzzing for five it. minutes. <laughs> it's very true. Um, we have oh, we have fans of Halo Three, so we have thinking inside the box Halo Three. Yes, Mysticles popping by. Hey everyone, um, I grew up in arcades. You crossed the line, and you got a beating in the parking lot for trash talking. LOL. That's uh, the den of geek. Saying that, Mysticles, hope the stream is going well. Carl is saying that is for sure. 99% of the time, when I game online now, it will be with friends or I will have the mic off. It is sad. And then to siphon, I'm 46 and I understand why kids don't play with toys anymore. Makes sense. And Retro okay. Tiburon says, back in the day, you would blow your eardrums with your or with illegal firecrackers we did used to play with uh stuff like some that some oh, toys yeah. were built in with firecrackers like there's oh, yeah. a, a line from hasbro called cops and all their their guns oh. they're like six inch figures and all their guns you would put caps in them mm -hmm. and they would like i remember <laughs> yep oh yeah yep nice and then we have escalated friends saying how often do you all stream and not a fan of cops and then we have oh. Retro Tiburon saying Halo 3, baby. So uh, I don't know if that was for you about the streaming part. Um, oh, yeah. We, we about just, streaming. Yeah, we always put out a different schedule every week, just kind of working around what we can do. You know, we're all pretty busy. So we, we usually uh, drop streaming schedule either Sunday night, Monday morning. And uh, actually, this, this week we're going to have a pretty full week again, which we haven't been able to have in a while conventions and you know life it happens but yeah it's different every week but we always put out a schedule for you guys yeah i know that you were saying that you were streaming um the new zelda game yes. for what the past couple days now yeah uh we being me and the community we started 10 o'clock on friday on launch day uh five hours then Saturday did four, and then today we did seven, seven and a half hours. Ooh, of it. Very nice. so that sounds we've done rough. a lot. <laughs> yeah, seven good. Oh, it's, it, it's it's ridiculous. The game is so good; it's ridiculous. I can't, I can't wait. We're we're gonna stream it. Uh, we're gonna start it tomorrow night. I think myself yeah. and uh, Millennial Collector are both going to just stream that this week. So I'm looking forward to it. Very nice. Yeah. So uh, let. I mean, we can we can talk about that a little bit. Let's uh, talk about your Zelda experience so far. 
Uh, so as I was saying, when you stepped away, um, I was never really a fan of Breath of the Wild. Uh, there okay. was two things in Breath of the Wild that I didn't like. One was the weapons being destroyed. Mm. Um, having all the amiibos, you know, slamming them all down, getting all the great boxes, and you get like Ganon's spear or whatever you get. And then yeah. two seconds later, it's broken. Right. Like, oh, I didn't like that. I also didn't like uh, the world is enormous as it was filled with not really much to do. Sure. Really, there really not a lot to do. Um, they've fixed that. Uh, the okay. weapons still break. I, I won't spoil anything story-wise or anything. The weapons still break, but you can fuse them with literally anything. Huh. Um, so you can take like a stick and a stone and make stick stone bat yeah or you can put like a mushroom and a board together and make mushroom bat you can make anything it's insane (laughs) um we were in the in the uh my community today we're making cars we're driving around in these cars that we're building out of wood and uh batteries and engines and stuff like that so i i stayed away from everything i i would say for you guys to do the same that means just friendly advice don't watch reviews no. Don't read anything. Just enjoy it yourself. And by me doing that, it's made me enjoy the game so much more. Because I'm not I don't have anyone's opinion coming down on me. Yeah. I watched the one trailer for it and that was it. Um, and that's really helped my enjoyment. I think going forward, I'm gonna do that with a lot more games. Like when Grand Theft Auto comes out, for sure. I'm just gonna go in on my own and form my own opinion. But you guys are gonna love it. It's it's insane. They filled the world with something like every 10 steps you go into a little cave there's chests everywhere there's bosses there's world bosses um different environments for the goron and the zora like the the zora level that we went to today is in the east end of the map it literally took seven hours to get there it took seven hours i'm not even kidding that's just one part so yeah that's all i'll say you guys will love it it's great Yes, I do not want to read any spoilers or no. reviews. I'm I'm not ready to play it. Um, just right now, anyway. I got a few other things I need to, you know, get caught up on, especially recapping from like the weekend. But after that, there may be a chance that I, uh, you know, dive into it. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. It's been uh, my most anticipated game since they announced it. I mean, hands down for me. See, I I definitely do agree with some of your points with Breath of the Wild. That that was definitely true. But for me, it was like, I, I don't know, just having that open world Zelda experience, it just blew me away. Like it was what, you know, it's pretty much what the original Zelda was. It was that sort of concept. Yes. And, and yeah. that's what I got from it being that that was my first Zelda. I was like, okay, all right, this is what it feels like. It feels like the original Zelda game. We're seeing it in a 3D environment. Yeah, it's coming, it's coming from a lifetime of go to the dungeon you get the cool weapon or item to use with the next dungeon. Yeah. Right. Every single Zelda has been like that. And then breath of the wild completely changed that. There was no more hook shot. Didn't need it anymore. And I remember just being the guy like, this is not my Zelda and really resistant to that. And with this one, I can't say if that stuff's in it or not. There's a few things I think you'd be surprised with, but I'm more open to it just because the world feels more alive. It okay. just feels more alive. Sure. Does, so. Yeah. Huh. I Do you think, uh, you know, I was thinking about this and actually talking about this uh, at uh, Korg's, that the fact that the game was developed for the Wii U, do you think that that probably held a lot of that back? You know, with Breath of the Wild versus this being a Switch exclusive? Yeah, I mean, it was like Twilight Princess, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think this is the only Zelda that we'll get on the Switch. Obviously, we're pretty pretty far into the Switch life cycle now. But yeah, I think I think that absolutely does have an effect on it, sure. Yeah, more powerful hardware and you could tell this was developed just on the Switch. Whereas yeah, I think obviously the last one was built on the Wii U hardware. So yeah. Yeah, that that definitely affects it. Like it's still you'll still recognize Hyrule, but it's just yeah, it's like you know when you get a new computer and then you're like, I can play any game, and you put in the game at the max settings. That's what it feels like when you play this. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. that's great. Yeah. I... We... Oh, good. yeah. We do. We do have um someone asking real quick. I 
I know um, someone also answered. They said, I'm a fan of J2 and love all that. How often do you stream? So they are asking. And then, of course, Lisa said he streams Thursday through Sunday. So I just wanted to let you speak a little bit more on the streaming yep. or how often you do. No, that's, yep, she's exactly right. Uh, Thursday through Sunday. Um, pretty much I start at 9 a.m. I have a live show called Morning Coffee. Okay. We watch a lot of gaming content together. We, okay. we critique it, we react to it, and then I pretty much stream all day. Very nice. So yes. Thursday so, through Sunday on YouTube, it's real easy. Yeah, just come on, come on by, and you'll catch me. Perfect. So awesome. Yes. Now we have okay. Perfect. Um. Yeah. Most of the streams aren't even quest oriented; just wandering and having fun. Um. That's what the Denna Geek was talking about. I think when we were talking about people who stream. Um earlier so they were just yeah, he was with me today during uh tears of the kingdom and oh, okay. we were trying to get to the zora area so we saw the point on the map okay. but like i said every 10 feet it's like oh there's a guy's like help i need help with this or this this you know event happens so there's so much to it so just getting to that mm -hmm. is why it took seven hours right okay so, so let me ask you this since you said that um do you think because i had almost 200 hours in breath of the wild do you think you know you could put a lot more time into this game versus breath of the wild are you thinking oh, yeah. that yeah okay yeah and i, I haven't like i haven't even seen a dungeon like i said i haven't read anything or watched anything sure. so i don't know if they're the big beasts like they were in the other one or not but i haven't even seen a dungeon yet so wow wow and that's awesome multiple hours into it um it's like any open world game like grand theft auto you can go story 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 but traversing across not having a horse traversing across that land it takes a long time because it's not like ocarina where it's hyrule field and you just run across Hy no 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 because <laughs> the, sta the stamina bar right so it's like well there's this huge gaping river now all of a sudden now you have to build a hovercraft you have to build a boat or you're not going to be going anywhere so there's a lot more to traversing the environment than there was in the last one or any previous sure. zelda game so yeah but that's that's the way to go though you want to get the most out of it and you don't just want to like rush through read all the stuff up on it you want to take your time and explore and if it takes seven hours it takes seven hours you know you want to get the most experience out of it you want to you know not pass over anything so i i think that's the way to go it's it's a great game to stream and you guys will see if you're streaming it um just one last thing real quick there's this little I, I, karaki i can never pronounce them right anyway he's like mm -hmm. I, I need to get to my friend up there and <laughs> you're trying to figure out how to do it so i cut down all these trees and made like this giant pole i stuck him on the end of the pole and I like shimmied him up the mountain to get him to his buddy. There's just cool stuff like that <laughs> that you think outside of the box to to solve, and leave it to Nintendo to come up with something. And that's why they're the greatest game company on the planet. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't disagree. <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome. I'm I'm glad to hear that. I can't wait. I I love Breath of the Wild. At you know for for a while, saying it was my my favorite Zelda. It, I go back and forth. Cause like you know, I really, I really like the the two D games as well. Um, but I'm just like super, super pumped about this game. I, I can't wait to start it tomorrow. That's awesome. What did you guys see? Um, I, we should have put this in the news, and I, I guess this can be sort of a transition there. But did you guys see that the um, somebody beat the game in like? 36 hours or something like that or, thir or not sorry not hours 36 minutes they beat the game in 36 minutes i was just looking it up yeah what? yeah that it was 54 minutes on launch day and then it's been shaved down since yeah. keeps going down and down yeah that's Th like 30 let me ask hours. you this what? how how <laughs> and when you start the game you'll understand what i mean because you're up in the sky it's no spoiler right you're not on high roll you're up in the sky yeah and the way the environment is like i said you can't just go from point a to point b so it's not like breath of the wild where you go from shrine to shrine to shrine sure it's difficult this one you can't you got to create things and blah 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 so i don't know unless they had the game a week ahead of time or something like on launch day how you could beat something in 54 minutes 
It possesses yeah. something that I don't. He, they possess something I don't have. Then I don't know what it is, but good for them. Yeah, and like, why would you want to do? It's like you really don't even get an experience out of it. You're missing so much, and it's like, can you really even enjoy it? I get they do it, you know, because they want to be the first or the one who like completes sure. it the fastest or something. But world first, yeah, absolutely. It, just, yeah. it doesn't make sense though. Like, why would you spend all that money and all that? time essentially when you're just gonna have to go back over it i know they're doing it for other reasons but it it really doesn't make sense in like a theory standpoint because speedrunner <laughs> that's all i can no, say not on that type that's of all game, I can I say. given the, given the fact too that nintendo releases a mario game a, a core mario game or a zelda game once maybe twice a generation yeah i mean yeah. the last zelda was six years ago i agree and i kept saying it um in my chat today it's like this is a slow playthrough. We're not trying to get to the end. We're going to enjoy every minute of yeah. this because it's going to be, well, it'll be the next generation consoles before we get a Zelda now. So yeah. it'll be six, another six years or whatever. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they want that, that title. It's, it's like I a competition. I yeah. I, I don't get into it because I'm not good at video games. I'm very open about not being good at video games, but I enjoy them. <laughs> There's a couple of fighters out there first. that. I could kind of see both, right? To be a world first, to say you were the first person to be Tears of the Kingdom. I, that's pretty cool, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. But at the cost of not enjoying it. I don't know. It seems yeah, like a lot of pressure. But then again, that's why I'm not a speedrunner, right? So Yeah. Yeah, we have a, a huge fan um, of speedrunning. It says, uh, thinking inside the box, speedrunning is so awesome. I'm a huge fan. I mean, I agree. I like to see it on other style games. Not really this type of game. I feel like... Definitely other games. I've I enjoy that a little bit more. Just to, to see um my favorite Zelda is Majora's Mask, and I like to watch a lot of speedruns on that. Glitch speedruns or or glitchless, whatever. But to 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 see these guys meticulously play this game over and over and over again and find these glitches like Oh, the third pixel on this wall, you jump three times sideways and you can go through it. It's like, how do you even begin to <laughs> find something like that like it, the, the hours and hours it must take just to mess around in this one little area like my hat's off to those people it's incredible oh, yeah yeah i know i couldn't do it. it it blows me away even with watching some of the people do like the the super mario maker levels like some of those crazy oh, those, crazy yeah. crazy <laughs> levels and i'm like i could never and i've tried like, I've, heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah i've tried and like some of these levels i mean like if you just like a quarter of a millimeter like you know if you move that pixel at all in the wrong direction yeah, cool. you're dead <laughs> do you remember the halo 3 map maker i think it was yes. called forge yes that was the first one where you could create your own level i remember i spent hours and hours and hours building this level i thought was so great and then I remember nobody wanted to play it. I was just like, oh, I'm so <laughs> bummed out, man. That's that was worst. my first and only time I created a level. Yeah. Oh, like, that's that's, that's, that's that's why I don't play Minecraft. <laughs> I, have no, yeah. I have no creativity yeah. Yeah. when it comes to to designing the levels. I like to play the levels, but I don't design sure. them. I've tried. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> definitely on that. <laughs> Um, so I think, yeah, we could probably uh, transition over to some news. Um, yes, we've... We, already, we already touched on some of the news uh, parts. Obviously, we jumped to The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. So we already talked a little bit about that. And then also for news, we have the first full trailer for the live-action Gran Turismo film is here, giving us a look at the real story that saw a player of the game become an actual race car driver. Cast members like Orlando Bloom, David Harbour, and District 9 director. So that is in theaters August 11th. We did actually um, have that for last time, but we, we did kind of miss over that. So we just wanted to, you know, quickly shout that out. And I'm curious to see a little bit more. I did briefly watch the first, um, you know, trailer, but I don't really know too too much about it and I, I definitely have to do a little bit more you know digging when they release more and more trailers but i think it's cool to see all of these video game adaptations coming out and i kind of want to see where all of these things go i think the trailer looks great uh, i've seen it a few times it starts up a lot on uh, youtube videos it'll yeah. play before that um yeah. it's 
it's a really interesting idea. If it is based on a true story, mm-hmm. it's cool. But they they show tons of footage of Gran Turismo, the game, and they talk about Gran Turismo a lot. Um, and it's interesting to see a video game movie where they're actually talking about the video game, right? It's not like... Right. You know what I'm trying to say? It's yeah, like no, they, I, they show I the game, they mention the yeah. game. It's like, well, and they're making fun of the kid, right? It's like, oh, because you could play Gran Turismo on your PlayStation doesn't mean you can drive a real car. So I'm not a car guy, but I think the movie looks pretty cool. Yeah, and I loved the racing games back in the day. I used to play those all the I haven't played a, a newer one anytime, you know, recently, but I loved playing those. <laughs> yeah, so. I mean, I think it's uh it's it's interesting. What you were saying, actually talking about the game in the trailer, that's kind of got mm-hmm. me, you know, a little bit interested in it. Um, yeah, I think it'll be yeah. cool. I'll definitely watch it and give it a go. I, I you know, video game adaptations, as mm-hmm. of recent, are getting better. But, um, yes. again, I'm not a car guy either. So, you know, showing all these cars and stuff is not my thing. I like to, to play these games. Um, I'm more of an arcade type with, uh, you know, like arcade racer. Versus yeah. like a simulation yeah, it's like, racer. Give me the car that looks like the Corvette. I don't need to know what kind of engine or tires it exactly. has. Just, it goes fast. Okay, I'll pick that one. Let's do that one. You know, <laughs> That's how I am. Yeah, I'm, like the arcade racers, I enjoy those. Uh, the simulation stuff, not so much. I get I get the concept. You know, I know people that get the rigs all set up with yeah, you know, the wheel. Awesome. They're awesome. Yeah. But I know a guy that has yeah. like a $6,000 rig just for these simulation racing games. And I'm like... That is more than my, uh, you know, my car is probably worth. Yeah. I mean, if <laughs> so. you're going to do it, do it right. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's cool, it, man. Go for it. Yeah. yeah. But I'm looking forward to it. The trailer looks cool. I, like like you said, I've seen it pop up several times. So I'm I'm going to watch it. Yes. And we have people saying um, the trailer, it says does T. So I'm thinking that's probably doesn't get me hyped. And then we have... Um, Yes, someone else is saying, I like Retro GT. The Den of Geek is saying, we'll probably see more video game movies after the success of the Super Mario movie. So, I mean, I agree. I, I think we're going to start seeing even more and more. So, hopefully they're all done right and it doesn't start, you know, getting too oversaturated. <laughs> but I, I think well, most of them from this point. Who would have thought it's like you just have to follow the actual story of the game right. it's not you know it's not hard it's like the yeah. bob hoskins one we're all kind of scratching our head like, like what what? Is, what is this what is it like I, I don't want to go on a tangent about it because it's a wonderful disaster but it's like little things like that doesn't even look like koopa like i don't understand what this is supposed to be and so when you have a movie where nintendo's behind they're like okay you know what we're gonna steer the ship this is Mario. He's a plumber with his brother. He's going to go in the Mushroom Kingdom. And everyone loves it. Who would have thought? This is based yeah. on the game. <laughs> yeah. I feel like they did it right in being so close to the game. And, and that's what... Mm-hmm. Like, we saw a few things come out right before where, you know, the critics were, like, bombing it. Like, you know, this isn't a good movie. Blah, blah. What did you want Mario to be for its first movie? Like, it did exactly what a oh, Mario game got, would do. People will come. They complain about everything. And, and I agree. Was it Chris Pratt? It was the voice, right? Yeah. yeah. Everyone yeah. Was about that. Everyone's like, they want George to, or what's his name? George Martinet or whatever to do the voice. Charles. It's like, Charles, Charles Martinet, thank you very much. And it's just like, come on, guys. Like, Everyone is so guarded about what they love. And if you go outside that box at all, it's like they're there with the, the torches and the pitchforks. It's like, yeah. just give it a chance. Relax. Even if it was done that way, people would have complained. Oh, yeah. we should have went in a different direction. I mean, you just yeah. you can never make everyone happy. 100%. I, I think true. it's great. I, I, I haven't seen it. I, I've heard a lot of, about it and the references to like obscure Mario stuff. And yeah. I, I think that's all really great. It's, it's it looks fantastic. Like Are you planning on seeing it um, anytime soon, or waiting till it like? I'm gonna out? get it. Like, hopefully, they bring out the, yeah. the physical copy. I'm sure they will, but I'll be buying it day one. Yeah, I, I'm good. Like, if you guys want to talk about, it, I don't care about spoilers or anything. Like no, that. no, no. Oh, we've, we've we've talked about it so much. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Spoiler free, several of course. Uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna get. It. I have all those all the movies. I have the Resident Evil movies and like nice. House of the Dead. I have all the and the Mario Brothers one, the old one. So yeah, mm-hmm. I'll be getting this. But one. do you have a Double Dragon? I do, unfortunately. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> my man. Yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, there's been so many. There, there's so many that people don't even know about. Like, uh, there's a Far Cry movie. Uh, 
you know, there's yeah, those are like the the straight, straight, straight to DVD DVDs. Yeah. Oh yeah, those are like straight to the Walmart like. <laughs> the clearance bin. There's yeah, a little right like five dollar like, like hey, the, back to the truck to the bin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they've tried that. You know, they've tried that with. Uh, there was a Need for Speed movie. I believe, and uh, oh wow, yeah, I yeah. Mean, how do you, is there even a story for like that? <laughs> I don't know. I think every one of them is different. I don't really pay attention to the story for games like that that much. It's really, yeah, yeah it games like that. I, I usually don't care about the story too much. <laughs> yeah. You know, I had my 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 backup when the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe started too, because it was really jarring to me to see actual human beings playing comic book characters it just was weird it's kind of like a street fighter fan like when you saw the movie and guile looked nothing like guile i was just like they couldn't even get his hair right like (laughs) that's guile is his hair that that's guile it's like nah, we don't need that it's like what and now he's got a blue a blue outfit the the best (laughs) thing to come from that is uh street fire the movie the game you know what? I streamed that. I streamed that a few a few months ago, and you can laugh, but it plays really well. It does. It's got this, yeah. It plays good. It's I defend cheesy, it. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. cheesy, but I I defend that game. I it's fine. I, yeah. I like Isn't that, that one yeah. like going up too in price, or like it's more than what you would expect it to be? I think so. Yeah, yeah it's. I think it's, it's just a little it. more than what you would expect it to be. I feel like if you get it, like the PlayStation one's not bad. If you go a little more obscure, like the Saturn release of it, then it's a little more. Expensive. Yeah, Saturn everything though is Yeah. That's where yeah. I've I've never played the PS1 version, but yeah, the Saturn Saturn's mm-hmm. where I played it. That's the one I have is the Saturn one. Yeah. I think I have the Saturn one too. That's good, yeah. Yeah, I dig it. <laughs> <laughs> we also have um uh Gigi McGee saying, Jay, you seem awesome. How long have you known the junction people? Oh hey, thanks. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yes. How long have we known each other? Um not too long, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. But I got to say, I was super impressed with the promo that they did with uh, This Is A Call by Foo Fighters. I was like, I was just, I woke up and I saw it. I'm like, oh, this is cool. And I'm like, there's sound to this. What? And then I clicked on it. And I was like, oh, friggin' right on. And it just made my whole morning. So, yeah, great people. Absolutely. That's awesome. Definitely. And we have, um, okay, so Gigi McGee said, I gave you a sub. So that's awesome. Cool. Hey, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thank you. And then we have the Den of the Geek saying, Jay has a love of The Wizard, which is still one of the best video game movies yes. ever. I love The Absolutely. Wizard. <laughs> I love The Wizard. I actually have t- a t-shirts for sale um, with Wizard Designs. Nice. Yeah. I have a, Luca, a Lucas t-shirt and a Corey t-shirt. Yeah, so. Nice. <laughs> Very cool. We might have to grab one of those. That's cool. Love it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, a lot, lot of fun. I love that movie. And everyone, blah, blah, blah. It's a Nintendo commercial. Yeah, so what? Yeah, but <laughs> it's a fun that? Nintendo so commercial. They want, to promote, they want to promote one of the best games of all time. I mean, Super Mario Bros. Yeah. 3 is, is, is in the top yeah. 10 games of all time. And it works. Yeah. I loved it. And like I said, I'm a little bit older, so I did see it in the theater. And the fact that Nintendo kept mario 3 a secret like they did because legitimately we didn't know and i remember right. seeing it and it's like super mario 3 and when he does that and that curtain comes up to show it we just we crapped ourselves i'm like oh my god like what it was just it was amazing it was one of the coolest experiences ever is the movie cheesy of course it's cheesy it's got fred savage for god's sakes but it's so good <laughs> It's just uh, even take the video game stuff away, and it's a nice, family-friendly, entertaining movie. No, I definitely agree with that. We also have um, Arkansas Picker popping in saying hello. So, howdy. And then we also Yo. have Geeky McGee still asking a few questions. Um, a couple that I guess we'll all kind of go around the room here. Um, so, what makes you guys do podcasts? And then also is asking this jay do a podcast or is he a celebrity streamer i guess we'll kind of uh just go around like <laughs> uh, just, we'll do it more. jay just we'll scratched his head like what my celebrity <laughs> well my ego would say no i'm just kidding <laughs> yeah we'll just say like um 
what kind of makes us do, I guess, these different things, like with the live streaming and all that, and we'll just kind of bring it towards that, not necessarily like honing it on a particular like podcast or like sure. why everyone do does what they do. I guess if you want to just let you them know. To- I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I I do live streaming and podcasts. I guess it's all one and the same, right? I do it because I love talking with people about the stuff I love, mm-hmm. and, and you know, I love connecting with like-minded people. I like meeting new people. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to entertain people. I've been an entertainer my whole life. That's just what I do. So you combine all that together. If you were if you were to tell me, if you were to tell like eleven year old me, hey. When you're an adult, you're going to get to play video games. And not only that, people are going to watch you play video games. And you can make money playing video games. I would have been like, what? Like, What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> so, Yeah, mind blown. Uh, yeah, I just, I, I love doing it. I love hanging out with people and talking about what, wherever the chat goes during whatever game I play. So that's why I do it. That's awesome. I, I feel like that's kind of why we're all you know, here, the community is probably one of the best parts about it and just having fun and sharing those memories and kind of growing as a person, opening up a little bit more. People get to see over time. I feel like when I first started doing like YouTube videos and stuff on my channel, I didn't know what I was doing and I was kind of asked to do it. And when I like started my game Raymer page, it was like, I look back at those first videos and I'm like, Wow, that's that's interesting to watch. And then you kind of go forward now, and it's you know you just you open up a little bit more, and then in person you're a little bit more lively. You're yourself, and then it starts to show yeah. a little bit more throughout that. So <laughs> there's nobody that has looked back at their first video or podcast or whatever and thought, "Wow, that was freaking awesome." <laughs> Not one person. You could talk like yeah. super famous streamers like like PewDiePie or XQC. Nobody has ever looked back at their stuff and been like, wow, I was really great from the get-go. And that's part of this art form is that you learn as you go. Every stream gets better. Every video gets better, right? You learn something from every experience. It's a good good thing if you view it that way because that means you've you've come a long way from what you're Mm -hmm. doing. And it's fun to make fun of yourself. It is. I don't take it... It's healthy. It's healthy. Like, I love Zelda, but I don't profess to know... Shigeru Miyamoto's shoe size and all that like you know I don't go that crazy do you know what I mean so if someone's like actually Jay Zelda didn't come out in 85 he came out in 86 I'm like oh cool thanks man yeah uh, guys it's like oh well no you know actually you gotta be right all the time so yeah you gotta, you gotta we, all, we all learn yeah yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely I agree yeah it's uh it, it's cool to have you know the community aspect having people in here like there might be somebody that game ramer knows that i've not gotten to talk to you know vice versa and just kind of connecting with people connecting with your audience in a different way than you can like on a youtube video you know like a standard youtube video or short or whatever it's it's a different um you get a different perspective of that person you get Mm -hmm. a different perspective of your guest you know you get to just kind of get into like a you know, backstory with the guest, but also you just kind of learn about everybody. If you know, for me and Game Ramer, you learn more about us all the time, and it's a it's a cool aspect with the audience. So I love it. How long have you guys been streaming for? Like game streaming? Pretty much around the time that we started the podcast, maybe a little bit before, probably a month or two. So we're thirty nine episodes in every every week. So so you're new to game streaming. Yeah, relatively new. Yeah, I okay. pro- started the the, sh- the actual like game streaming a few months before that. So yeah, not not long. Yeah. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah. For sure. I'm new to it as well for the game part. I've only been doing it since October, so nice. it's new to me as well. Yeah. It's a completely yeah, different well, thing. I mean, it's like totally different than just doing like a video or you know just talking about something. It's. I, I like it more. Um, I I don't mind editing and stuff like that. Like like all of us, we taught ourselves how to do all that stuff, right? I don't mind making produced videos and stuff like that. Um, but I'd much rather be live. I just think my personality comes out better. You don't, you know, when the camera's on you and you're recording, it's like you do sneak tapes, but you can't do that in the live stream. True. Right? So it's like when you fumble your words or mess up, it's fun to make fun of yourself. And be like, Did I just say that? Oops. Uh, oh, people what? can see you, the real you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
yeah, you you do you really get to to see the person as they are. You know, when you're live, it's totally different. So like you, you know, you make a mistake or you do something wrong, you get to see that person's reaction to said yeah. mistake or you know, and you get to engage in real time with with your viewers and and stuff like that. I I love it. I love all of it. I mean, I'm I'm a fan of being able to just you know have that community aspect. I like all forms of the the content. So <laughs> we got a few few people in here. Um, we got Den the Geek says "Live in the Groove" should be the Nintendo theme song. Uh, Escal Escalated friend says hi Arkansas. I'm a fan. He's, a, he's an awesome guy. Definitely give him a sub on his channel. Um, then Arkansas Picker says, I hope nobody finds my first stream. It was awful. <laughs> uh, Den of the Geek says, Nintendo Quest and action figure adventure drew a lot of us to Jay. Then he started streaming video games, and we were all in as he played horrible games and some great games. <laughs> and, and then uh, Tom Jenkins, which is, uh, he's a guy over at CGC, um, he said, "Hey, nerds." <laughs> yeah, what's going on? He um, he runs Cleveland Gaming Classic, which we'll be at, and he, he's an awesome guy. So, welcome, Tom. Oh, it's wicked. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> when we actually we did a tour for Nintendo Quest, and we went to uh, Cleveland for one of the screenings. Oh, nice. nice. That was great. Yeah. Where, where do you think we went first? The friggin' Christmas Story House. That's like the first. Oh, absolutely. There. I I I can't wait to to go visit that. I got to when I'm there. Yeah. For sure. Uh, then uh, Tom said, "Met Jay and interviewed you a number of years ago with CGC. Good to see you again, Jay." Okay. There you go. Yep. All right. What's Hi. going on, buddy? Cool, cool. And That's then, awesome. We appreciate all of the support, everyone. Thanks for you know stopping in too and, and commenting. We definitely. we do appreciate it <laughs> for sure. And everyone who's over here from my channel, make sure you guys you know the rules. Give these guys a sub. Yeah, they're awesome, and you can tell they both have a passion for gaming. So there you go. Give them a sub, follow, like, and all that good stuff. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate the yeah, kind thank words. You. We really do. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so I think, you know, other than that, we've got uh, one one news topic left, which we also yeah. did not get to hit last week. Um, <clears throat> computer space, Barbie fashion designer, and The Last of Us, oh, and Wii Sports as well, were announced Thursday as the Hall of Fame's class of 2023 for video games. Barbie fashion designer was the first video game to target girls, letting them design and print clothes for the Barbie dolls. It quickly took off, selling more than 500,000 copies in two months after its 1996 release by Digital Domain, which actually we had. I had that with my sister, so I yeah. uh, I played that exact game that they're uh, putting in there. I think those are all um, worthy worthy uh, entries into you know into that. I think so. I think so too. I think that's great. I would agree. It's weird the computer space hasn't been in there. Right. That was like, that's yeah, kind of my like, thought. Yes, that should not have been in the first year, but I mean, again, it's like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, right? It's just it kind of just grab at things. Barbie one, I think, is great. Wii Sports, I think, is great. Yeah, I agree with all those. Yeah. Yeah. I'm shocked a couple weren't in there a little sooner, but you know, here we. Here yeah, we you would think computer space would be in there the first like introduction for it, but yeah, I mean, I think all those are. You know, very valid, and um, that makes sense. Yeah, like mm -hmm. you, you brought up the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Isn't it so strange how there's so many of these, like, you know, bands that really change the music industry that get completely just subsided by, like, non-rock and roll acts or, or, you know, people that didn't really have anything to do with that scene or that genre of music? Like, you know, it, it's kind of weird. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame hasn't been about just rock and roll for a long time. It's yeah. just like the Music Hall of Fame now, and I'm fine with that. Um, the genres are so mixed now. Everything's so blended that it's, I mean, what's what anymore? There's so many it's divisions of heavy hard. metal I can't even count, right? So Yeah, um, that's true. It's all, I mean, music's art. It's all personal opinion, right? So no matter who you nominate, no matter who you want to put in, there's always going to be people that don't agree or the people that agree with it. Sure. Mm -hmm. so. Yep, for sure. And then we've got um, Tom said, wish I would have been at Corks this past weekend, but down in Florida. 
Um, he gave some devil horns, three of them. Back at you. Uh, liked and subscribed already. Den of Geek. Arkansas Picker said, how was Quirks? Um, Quirks is awesome. Yeah, that Millennial Collector said Quirks was freaking awesome. With AC this year and everything. Yeah, if you went last year, it was a nightmare with the heat. There was no AC and it was it was bad. <laughs> Let's just say somebody passed out and went to the hospital. It was that bad. But uh yeah, it was it was freaking awesome, man. Loved Korgs this year. Um it was Game Ramers first uh first, first time in Ohio. So I had a blast. We're definitely gonna have some more stuff. Uh we have a lot of footage to go through um for my channel as well, for for Game Junction as well. It's so much to go through, but we will have tons of content coming out. Tons of pickups, all all kinds of cool things. So definitely excited to share all of that and definitely, you know, can't wait. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Uh Arkansas Picker said, Wish I could have went. Tom said if there's anything you can ever count on me for, it's devil horns and some ACDC. Right on, man. Right on. <laughs> Love it. So I mean with that said, actually, you know, I wanted to um dive into some music. So let's uh Let's talk some music for a bit before you get to community questions. Um, but I, I'd love to hear like kind of your background in music. You know what what got you into it. What you know as far as the genre. What got you to Foo Fighters? Like where where are you at with uh, with music? Uh, I started playing drums when I was thirteen. Um, uh, music class in grade seven and eight, we had brass instruments and woodwind instruments, and there was a drum set in the back of the classroom that nobody was ever allowed to touch. Um, and it was always kind of weird. Our school didn't really encourage that stuff. I remember going to my music teacher saying, I, I want to be a drummer. Well, no, you have to be a tuba player first. I'm like Why? super small, right? Especially in grade eight. So I don't want to play the tube. I want to play drums and wasn't allowed to do that so i i was into that begged my mom she got me a drum set when i was 13 and my goal in life was simple i wanted to be the drummer and kiss that's all i wanted to be right just a small goal <laughs> and so i just set out i learned everything from back in black to zeppelin um, right. and then seattle came the 90s and that was it i yep. saw dave Grohl play drums in nirvana and just i'm like that's what i want to do I'd never seen a drummer play like that. I still have never seen a drummer play like him. So I adopted a lot of his styles, a lot of his techniques, and then picked up the guitar and found a, a new world playing guitar and singing in the current band along with uh, everyone else. We all sing in the band. It's really great. Just I, I love music. Um, I love playing pretty much all kinds of music. It's something that I need to do to survive. I really, that's the honest truth. I need to listen to it. I need to play it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I, you know, I, I thank my, my mom for that. You know, she always had the uh, AM radio playing. So top 40. So I was raised on Elton John, uh, George Michael. And my friends showed me GNR and Motley Crue. So I love everything. There you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm all over on the music spectrum. Um, mm -hmm. I know we we talked obviously you know Nirvana is my favorite band. I like Dave yeah. Grohl a lot. I, yeah. He's an incredible, incredible drummer. Um, and uh, it was sad that we you know we lost uh, Taylor Hawkins. Um, he was also a fantastic yeah. drummer. Um, so I would say I just want to throw this out there. Uh, the biggest lesson I learned in my life is from Dave and a, a reason he means so much to me is because when he was in Nirvana and Kurt died, he lost everything. Yes. Everything. He could have just faded away or he could have yeah. been a drummer in another band, but he's like, no, I'm going to do everything myself. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's a lesson that I still do to this day. You can do anything yourself. You just have to have the will and the discipline to do it. Right, so he played bass, guitar, drums, and vocals on that first record. Yep. Oh, yeah. That is still inspiring to me. So when I was doing the game stream or when I was doing the podcast or the YouTube channel, it's all you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? You guys are like a collaboration, but you know what I mean? For me, it was like, I have to do this myself. I had to learn editing. I had to learn lighting. I had to learn camera work, audio mixing, all that stuff. So he's such a big part of why I do what I do. 
No, I mean, I, I think that's great, you know, like a great message out there because I've, I've always kind of been that way. If you want something done, you got to learn it yourself. You got to do it right, you know, and, you know, especially with me, like on my personal YouTube channel, you know, I started from knowing nothing. Sure, and yeah. I was kind of like pushed into it a little bit, like nudged in. And then the other person was like, oh, there you go. And then I just, I had to go with it. And you're in the deep end. You're like, okay, I got to swim. <laughs> yeah. And then you just, you kind of have to like learn everything as you go. And like looking back, it's like, it's great to see that progress. And like, you really do have to like learn that. And like now as we're doing this with like Game Junction, it's like learning things is still like you're just still growing and like oh, you it's... still have so much to go through and we're still like you know going back and forth like hey did you know this hey did you know that and yeah. it's just all the time it's it's crazy to see that like it's it's insane like, i think people have this idea of uh, who's the biggest youtuber like mr beast they have this idea that he just has unlimited money just because he went viral by chance. I don't know if a lot of people know his true beginnings, where he would make Call of Duty videos and just commentate over them. That's where he started. That's where Post Malone yeah. started with Minecraft videos, right? Yep. Yeah. These guys, like James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd, they they ground and they've been doing it for a decade mm -hmm. or longer. So it's like you whether we like it or not you have to put in the effort and you have to put in the time the notion of going viral it's like winning the lottery yeah. people yeah. think oh well if just this video goes viral it's like you might as well go play the lottery man because you're gonna have more of a chance of winning the lottery than you are going viral right so it's just work and dedication that's all it is if you want to be successful do the work yes that's it that's i agree it. Everything in life, you have to put in the effort, put in the work. Nothing is free. No handouts. Like you just have to do it. Yeah, you have to. So and collaborate. I, I, like we're collaborating. This is great. You know, I, I like this. Meet meet new people. Meet yes. Meet uh, like minded people. Form connections. Mm -hmm. Sure, of course that helps. But ultimately, at the, at the end of the day, you're accountable for what you do. So you can yeah. do the work or you cannot do the work. That's I agree. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a ton of comments. I want to get through some of these. We've got. Um, Tom is asking, have you been slaying some of the Foo Pinball, Jay? And, I've, I saw the machine, but yeah. no, I, I haven't pre-ordered it. No, I, I'm not a pinball guy, but it looks friggin' amazing. It's yeah, it looks so cool. My, my friend, yeah, she um, she might come on the podcast later. She helped do like the launch for that, helped with some of the, the design. Oh, that's stuff. wicked. Yeah, wow. so that'd be really cool. Um, Tom says, Stern, who did the... the uh, Foo Fighters pinball will be at CGC this year. He also Hi. said, um, "Big George Michael fan, so amazing and so much in inspiration." Oh, um, George Michael's incredible. He is, okay. yeah, for sure. He said, "Girl was a legend." Um, Escalated friend said, "Love Nirvana." What's your guys' favorite Nirvana song? Oh, My, uh, how do you pick one? Yeah, I want you, you to go. You go first, man. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, probably. Um. Yeah, that is a hard one because it's, it's like the one band out there that there is a song that I don't like from them. Um, that's actually one of their big singles. Um, I'm not a big fan of Come As You Are, but uh, I kind of dive in a little bit. And I really, really like um, Even In His Youth, which was like a demo first. Yeah. And um, then you got like, you know, a full version of the song. It is, really, yeah, that's a good. That was a B-side on the Teen Spirit yeah. cassette. Yeah, yeah. Um, Big that's a great one uh spank through is another great one that was spank on sub pop 200 yeah uh but i mean like mainstream stuff like lithium is just who doesn't love lithium yeah. i would say probably that one for me yeah if we're talking like big single um probably heart shaped box i'm more in the bleach i like Nevermind a lot yeah, don't get me wrong but i'm more in the the yeah. bleach and um in utero uh heavy in in those two albums it's heavier it's a little little more punky right yeah, yeah. i like that yeah that, that's what i like so it's a lot more it's more raw on both of those yeah. so i'm a big fan what about you uh game ramer i mean i any anything really that comes on the radio or anything that i've listened to I I didn't mind, you know, Come As You Are, Heart Shaped Box. There's just so many. That's a good one, too, yeah. Yeah. Really just, just any of them. For sure. Yeah, and then uh, he also said Nirvana changed me for sure as a teenager. Um, 
Tom said CGC started with six people in my living room. Got to hustle. That, I mean, right there. Yeah, that's that's so that, you that, have to that's do. incredible. Yeah, and they're massive. I mean, it, they're yeah one of the biggest it, conventions in Ohio. No matter who you are, I mean, let's George Lucas. Like everybody starts with Shigeru Miyamoto. He designed artwork for the side of cabinets. Yep. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you, everyone starts somewhere. So yeah, you just got to do the work. Um. Then escalated friend also said. Also, after that question, what are your five favorite bands for each of you? <laughs> Man, I gotta think. That's so hard. Metallica is definitely up there for me. Um. I've been the same for my entire life, pretty much. <laughs> All right, let me just off the cuff: Nirvana, Alice in Chains, Marauder, Slayer, and the Misfits. That's my top five. Great. I'm like all over the place with music. I also really like, as a you know, side mention, because I I like all genres. Like I've I've been shaped kind of by yeah. just music as a general. Um, but I really like Waylon Jennings, which is like classic country. Yeah. Um, okay. And then I really, uh, I'm a big uh, NWA fan as well. So, like I said, all yeah, over dude, the place. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's mine's Foo Fighters, Oasis, Kiss, Faith No More, and Nirvana. It's been the same since I was like one years old. <laughs> Not really, but. Yeah, you know, mine always, it just depends on like my moods. It depends on like. In my middle school, high school, and like you know, it was always like Avril Lavigne, you know, at one point. <laughs> hey, listen, but, I, had a, I I still have a crush on Avril Lavigne, so I mean. So I I know some people have hate and stuff, but you know. I, oh, you know what? Who cares? I, who cares about I hate? Learned, like I what you like. Play the guitar, and I took singing lessons, and I learned how to do all of that because of. Like, that like i went through and it like really grew my like love into music and stuff and then you know as the time goes on you know i've been to blink 182 concerts muse you know 30 seconds to mars metallica um just so many different ones a day to remember i mean there's just the list can go on it's it, it's all over the place i listen to anything on the radio punk pop you know rap rock mostly like older you know, rap type of stuff, but you know, it's just, it's a mix of everything. So it really just depends, but there's just so many, I feel like. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, all over the place myself. So, um, mm -hmm. we got Tom also saying someone once told me it's a 10 year journey. You put in the passion yeah. and love for people and communities around you and show mm -hmm. love in a genuine way. You can do great things. Absolutely. Yeah. Takes time. <laughs> Uh, thinking inside the box, he's naming a couple uh, Nirvana tracks he likes. Come as you are, Penny Royalty, and all apologies. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, I love uh, the last two that you mentioned there. Uh, Carl said, "I think Lithium is probably my favorite Nirvana track." Yeah. I ab Din Din of the Geek, um, the Din of Geek. Sorry, absolutely love the unplugged version of the Man Who Sold the World. Man, that whole mm, set yeah. was incredible. <laughs> Same with Alice in Chains, man. That whole, like, yeah. I go back and, you know, listen to those. All, Pro those, probably all those, weekly. Unplugged, those unplugged performances, uh, Pearl Jam was another one. Uh, Eric Clapton was the first one I saw. That one was fantastic as well. Yeah, yep. The early unplugged stuff was great. Yeah, for sure. There is no, no doubt about that. He said, uh, thinking inside the box, said, I love Scoff off of Bleach too." Tom Jenkins. Oh said, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that. That is a good one. Nobody talks about that. Um, putting kiddos to bed and some more devil horns. Hey, thanks for watching the podcast. We definitely appreciate it, and uh, oh, we're looking forward to getting to see and actually meet you um, soon. Mm -hmm. And thinking inside the box said, "Great top five. And Kraz says, "What's up, peeps?" <laughs> Lots of comments. So I think we're caught up there on that. But um, do you want to uh, dive into our community questions, uh, Game Rammer? Yes. So, we can get um, so these right. were left on uh, Instagram. So every week, just for anyone who's watching now, we will have like a little, um, I guess like a little like promo post where we'll post something. Usually it's like some sort of like bright and colorful graphic that says, 
you know, when our podcast is for the upcoming, you know, Sunday, we usually try and post it between like Wednesday and Friday. And it'll say, you know, what are some questions that you guys have for the upcoming podcast? That way it gives you guys time to look over who our next guest is. And also for us in general, and just kind of like these community questions. So Naten Chibi 63 said, what other types of guests are coming on and what qualifies for a guest for the show? So pretty much we have a variety of, of different people, um, you know, coming on. We have voice actors, content creators, streamers, um, just just, just a, a great variety. And pretty much anyone in the, the community here, the gaming community, we just we love chatting with everyone. So that's that's pretty much, um, you know, that was kind of directed at us. And then yeah. we have gerbert alice 13 said what defines the barrier of a podcast being audio only or visual and audio i considered starting an ebook podcast that's that's a bit of a tough one i mean it depends on what your you know your target is or you know maybe your end goal for what you want for the podcast you know when you're having guests um we, I, I just very much like the, the visual aspect of a podcast, yes. too. I like being able to see people's facial expressions, mm -hmm. you know, say they show something in the podcast. I like having that option there for people. You know, we have audio only for this as well. But there's always, like, you know, some, some sort of interactions that I like to see, and I'm sure mm -hmm. that other people like to see. So it depends on what you're doing, you know. Audio podcasts, mm -hmm. audio-only podcasts, they make sense for, you know, certain things. So that's commuting, know. car rides. That's that's what yeah. I listen to anyway. But Yeah. Yeah. So just having the option um, mm -hmm. for us makes sense, but you know, it depends on what you're trying to do. You know, audio only makes sense for other people, so I, I totally mm -hmm. get it. Oh, and the ebook podcast, that sounds pretty cool. Not gonna lie. Yeah, and I guess it's the same for you with, like, live streaming. You know, obviously you're going to do that and you want to see. I guess we can kind of spin it in that way. So you would want to live stream, you know, with your face there, your reaction. Some people live stream just audio only, but you don't, you know, you don't really get, like, the full picture. So Yeah, so. I mean, it, as, as a viewer, too, it just depends what you want to see. I prefer, like you guys are saying, I like to see the streamer, mm -hmm. podcaster. I would much rather tune into a podcast. Uh, where you can see the person. Yeah. Uh, I also like the live format better, which is why I like YouTube because you can go live and then it's archived on your channel. Yeah. Yes. I like that as well. Yeah. No, I think Definitely. I think there's some great uh, questions that we have this week, and you know, just make sure you guys stay tuned for that. And if you have any other questions, make sure you guys leave them on those posts. That way, we don't you know accidentally miss over something. And we can go ahead and uh, use that for our next podcast. Definitely. Did we have anything else that anyone wanted to bring up topic-wise first? I don't think. Did you have anything else, Jay, you wanted to talk about? Oh, I, no. I'm, I'm great. Thank you. Well, uh, where can, again, where can everybody find you? What mm -hmm. Do you have anything you want to promote? or? Oh, yeah. Uh, my YouTube channel. Absolutely. I would love it if everyone listening or watching could subscribe. If you guys like video games, if you like toys, that is my entire career. So you can find me on YouTube at Jay Bartlett. I don't have any cool, like, fancy name. It's just my regular name, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's awesome. We There's have a couple. Jay Bartlett, the, the long hair looking dude. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> the long haired looking dude. Well, you heard it here first, and uh, we appreciate having you on, man. Awesome oh, guest. Thank you so me. much. You guys are great. Thank yeah, you. definitely appreciate it. Everybody, please give a sub to his channel. All the information will be down below in the description. Like, comment, subscribe is always appreciated. And we'll see you mm -hmm. again next Sunday with our next guest. Have a good day, you guys.